A movement swept the polls in the state, winning 27 of the 40 seats. A police officer turned politician and ZPM chief Lal Doma, who's all set to become the next chief minister, spoke to Republic TV about his priorities and agenda. Listen. Sitting next to me is the next chief minister of Mizoram, Lal Doma. Pula Loma, welcome to Republic Media Network once again. We met in the morning and you exerted confidence that you will be emerging out as the single largest party getting absolute majority and as you said, it happened. Yeah. What was the magic that worked in favor of ZPM this time in Mizoram? Mizoram has been under the rule of Congress and MNF, these two parties, for about 35 years. People had enough of them and uh, they... There's the leaders are the same old leaders with the same old slogans. There's nothing new. So people want to see something new, some change for which we offer a new system. And they expect a better government, more efficient and corruption free government. And the youth, particularly, they have been so much disappointed with the present government. Unemployment problem is there, and the farmers, uh, they are toiling in vain. The crops, the yield, whatever the produces they have, there is no market, even though they have promised them. So all these empty promises uh, drive the people to look forward for a better government and a better future. What will be the first priority of your government as you take over? We are known as a friend of farmers. Uh, we have committed to them that if we are returned to power, we will purchase four items of crops which has been selected. They are ginger, uh, chili, broomstick, and turmeric. We have fixed the minimum price for this. And uh, yesterday, I have checked the financial position with the finance people here, and. We believe that we'll be able to buy this produce within this financial year, even though uh, what is left by the outgoing government is only the spillover. Mizoram has been depending upon uh, special ways and means, special drawing facilities, overdrafts, and uh, the RBI had given a warning recently to the government of Mizoram to stop this kind of practice. Uh, in spite of this, all these financial constraints, we are going to honor our commitments and we are going to take the process of buying their produce. Loma, you have the numbers, sufficient numbers to form the government. You don't need to go in alliance with anyone. Yeah. But given the national context now, there are several camps. The NDA is there, the I dot N dot D dot I dot A alliance is there. So the India Alliance and the NDA, whom you will choose? Because uh, round the corner, only a few months from now, the Lok Sabha election is also there. Yeah. We are a regional party with a national outlook and will remain to be so. We want to preserve our own identity, our own originality, and our own uh, regionalism. But uh, at the same time, everything will be done uh, with the national outlook. Um, but we would not like to join any political group at the national level, whether it is NDA or UPR or whatsoever it may be. Um, because we don't want to be dictated from Delhi. We want to take final decisions in our own hands here. At the same time, we would like to have a good understanding and relationship with the government of India, who is, uh, whoever is ruling there. Two very contentious issues fo were focused during these elections, yeah. particularly. One, the ethnic violence in neighboring state of yeah. Manipur yeah. and another the refugee crisis uh, because of the military junta rule in yeah. Myanmar. Yeah. You are a former IPS officer and you are the most right person here to ask yeah. what is your take on these two 
particular crisis one first i would like to get the, your reply on the manipur issue you see <clears throat> as the saying goes blood is thicker than water they are our brothers and sisters we cannot betray them when they are in such a bad situation it is more of a humanitarian issue rather than a political issue and um, I don't know what they are going to demand from the central government. Uh, so far as refuses from Manipur is concerned, on humanitarian ground, we have to shelter them, feed them, and give them all kinds of uh, necessary assistance to them. Um, government of India, I think, has also obligation to take care of its own citizens when they are in such a situation. So we'll talk to the Home Minister, uh, if necessary with the Prime Minister, and uh, something might have been done, we don't know everything. Uh, we don't know what have been done with the previous government. Uh, at the same time, we have to look at uh, the diplomatic relations with Burma, and we cannot go alone here at the state level. Everything has to be done uh, in consultation with the central government. Any specific appeal you would like to make to your uh, counterpart in Manipur? Uh, you are CM designate now, so yeah. any appeal? The first appeal as the Chief Minister of Chief Minister designate of Mizoram to the Chief Minister of Manipur. Well, the, being our neighbor, I would like to have a very cordial relationship with him. But at the same time, I am regret, I am sorry to say that we are very unhappy the way he handled the situation. The whole thing in, my, in Manipur is the total madness. And the long silence of the Prime Minister is echoing around the nook and corner of the country. And uh, we, we expect a better treatment. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, uh, it's not a fight between the Métis and the tribals. It is a fight between the government of Manipur and the tribals. The police officers, the armed police, the hostile group, they are in front. They are deployed in front. So this can happen only with connivance of the state government. Uh, instead of doing that, there should be a conduit in between let the central forces be deployed over there so that uh, from each side there will be no contact whatsoever and any, any kind of trouble also can be prevented that way. And this is not being done so far. My last question, sir, from an IPS officer to CM designate, how do you see this Zani so far? <laughs> in fact, uh, I've been in the road. <laughs> struggling all 39 years. Mm. I enjoyed it and it is an interesting uh, switch over. <laughs> several top policy makers and members of corporate India converge at Republic's 30th India Economic Summit at the National Capital Republic is all set to bring to you its day-long event tomorrow on the 5th of December starting at 8.45 in the morning. Don't miss out on the action as government representatives and industry leaders discuss India's growth story at the India Economic Summit sustaining the dream back.